Hello, YouTube. I'm Vince White. I'm an employment attorney, and I have light in my eyes because blinds are bullshit. Um, on this channel, <laughs> on this channel, we answer publicly posted questions from YouTube users, getting folks the answers they need from an employment attorney. Uh, we just got. The confirmation that YouTube has shipped our 100,000 subscriber plaque, the silver plaque, which, uh, as YouTube user Ed Head mentioned, is almost certainly made of tin or aluminum or something like that, but it's still painted silver and shiny, as Ed the Head pointed out. Now, we have a question here from YouTube user Truth Seeker, so let's provide an answer. Hi, Vince. I filed a complaint in federal court, and the judge scheduled a settlement conference. Statistically, how likely is the case to settle at that point? We have not started discovery and have about five months after the settlement conference for, for our deadline on discovery. I appreciate any insights on this. Thank you. Okay, so let me get out of the sun here. This is going to be I'm gonna look a little weird here. Hold on. Let me, let's make some adjustments. Okay, so uh, there's no... I mean, we can give you statistics on, like, how often settlement conferences result in settlement. But let me give you something to think about instead. Those statistics are irrelevant because every case is different. Every judge is different. And every plaintiff and every defendant is different. Every situation is different. There is no ability to extrapolate from the statistics because there's no actual similarity. Right? And let me get into it. Hypothetical, uh, you are demanding a million dollars and the other side's offering you a hundred thousand dollars and the judge is like sick of the case, keeps saying the case in the calendar, judge has had enough, judge schedules a settlement conference, judge might have a magistrate judge handle the conference, might she or he himself might hear the conference or they might have you meet with their court attorneys or, or even a mediator or a referee whatever it is now the judge if I understand my judgely ethics which I've never taken the judge ethics course because I'm not a judge but I do work as an arbitrator so it's somewhat similar the judge could give you a notion on where she or he thinks the case should settle that's not always ideal because let's be honest, the judge has not heard the case yet and the judge should be reserving judgment. In contrast, a magistrate or a referee or a mediator could tell you, hey, um, why are you demanding a million dollars? You might be like, because I want a million dollars. And whoever you're speaking to would be like, well, that's stupid. That's not how that works. Stop being stupid, stupid, right? And not you. I know not you, truth seeker. This is a hypothetical only. And you might be like, okay, uh, what would be a better demand? And they might be like, well, you got to calculate your damages, but I, I think you should demand 400000 I want you to come to, down to 400000 You can say yes or no. You say no, largely the conversation's over. Settlement conferences fail, right? You say yes, well... That magistrate, that referee, that mediator, they turn to defendants' counsel and they say, okay, is that the correct number? No, they're at 400K. Give them 400K. The defendant doesn't have to do that. The defendant doesn't have to settle. But the defendant's at 100 grand right now, so they've already made it clear they're willing to go into the six figure range. And this magistrate or referee or mediator is saying they should come to 400. That's fairly telling right like that doesn't mean they're going to lose the case but probably that person wouldn't be like give them 400 if the case didn't look pretty good right they could be like we don't have 400 or they could say okay or they could just say nah judge you haven't seen the whole thing like we're gonna blow this out of the water right but you see all those decision points in there there's a lot a lot of things are going, like, sincerely, it, it, it's about the situation. It's about the case. It's about the people involved. It's about the decisions made. It's about the bank balances, right? Uh, it's about your ability to understand how a case is valued, right? There's a lot of people who will say, like, this, this company is worth $11 billion. 
So I deserve 11 T billion. Okay. You just want to, uh, okay. You would like to be the richest man in the world. Thanks for letting us know. But that has nothing to do with the valuation of a case, right? If instead you're, you're using like a, your attorneys or some other resource or our uh, damages calculation playlist, like if you're using some resource to properly calculate damages and become conversant in the language and the calculation of damages, then you can give a really good statement of your damages. You can say, okay, listen, I've got 150K in economic damages. I've been unemployed for six months. I've got um, physical symptoms of anxiety. I've got a documented PTSD condition. So my emotional damages probably beat the soft caps pretty much anywhere you want to go in terms of jurisdiction. So, you know, we can call it 100K min, but probably 100K minimum, but probably we can beat that. And then um, punitives are in play. And I know pe people don't want to settle cases on punitives, but I got to tell you, I got to tell you the punitives are the lion's share of the potential winnings here. And I, I might want to go to trial on those punitives. So minimum 400, right? Well, that's much more compelling. That is in the language and correctly computed, or at least close to correctly computed, uh, in terms of what the media, the referee, the magistrate is thinking, right? That, that you're now in the language. You're conversant. In, instead of if you're selling a car, uh, which this annoys everybody, but if you're selling a car and you're like, I'd like 10000 for this car, and people are like, why? Because I'd like 10000 10000 would be nice. That's not how you sell a car. Instead, you say, hey, what does this car go for? What, what is this car, this make and model with 100,000 miles on it? What does the Kelly Blue Book or whatever resource you want to use say that it usually sells for? Okay, well, that's informative. I should be somewhere in that ballpark, right? I think mine's a little bit nicer or mine's a little dinged up. I got some dents. I got a little bit of rust. Whatever it is, you adjust up, you adjust down depending on the specifics, right? But you're, you're in the ballpark. Now, if you're asking for ten grand for a car that's worth two grand, probably no one's going to take you up on that unless they're very stupid, right? By the same token, if you're asking twenty four hundred for a car that's probably worth two grand, it's very likely somebody will at least be negotiating with you, right? Like you're in the ballpark, you're in the game. The car has been correctly valued. You're presenting a reasonable proposition that someone could take you up on, and that's going to change the probability of this case settling at that settlement conference drastically. Um, and this really comes what it comes down to, right? Like statistically speaking, like how often does an individual settlement conference get a case settled? Uh, one out of 20 times, maybe in my experience, that's, that's the loosey goosiest math I can possibly do. But like, that's, that's how I feel about it. Um, and often it'll just be the someone from the federal court system saying, hey, plaintiff, defendant, you both annoy me. You both seem stupid. You, plaintiff, your demand is stupid. You, defendant, your offer is stupid. Can you all stop being so effing stupid? I think this case should settle for X amount of dollars. Can you tell me why I'm wrong? Don't worry. I won't be the judge who decides your case. So you can tell me why you think I'm wrong. Right? And that can be very effective. Right? That, that can be wildly effective. Um, I've been in cases where, you know, you're in chambers, you're on the record, everything. And uh, judges like, ugh, counselors. Everybody stay here. Counselors in my, you know, let's go back. Well, both sides. Let's go back to my, my office, my chambers, right? And just go back to them and be like, what's the deal? Why, why is this case still in my courtroom? It's a very clear check should be written here. What's happening? And, I, you know, listen, plaintiff's attorneys can say things like, listen, um, we think the case is worth, whoa, look at the hornet. Da. Ah! We think the case is worth X, but my client doesn't want to take it, so we, we're going to embrace trial. Fair enough. They, they, get, they have that right. The client has that right to embrace trial, right? Um, by the same token, 
defense attorney could just be like, listen, judge, I hear you. I do. I've advised my client to, to put I don't know, 400K on this case repeatedly. Uh, my client just doesn't have 400K. Just doesn't, that's not in the bank account at all. And uh, judge might even float the idea of a payment plan, right? Like, uh, would the plaintiff accept a payment plan? I don't know, judge. I'd have to have a conversation with my client. I have to do a little bit of digging to see the likelihood that this company goes bankrupt before they make good on it. You know, like there's a lot. And the answer to that is, oh, yeah, you think it's going to matter? Because if they go bankrupt before or after the trial, are you any less screwed over? <laughs> Fair point, judge. Fair point. Maybe we can talk about the payment plan with my client. You know, it, it, some money is better than no money, and maybe the payment plan keeps the company from going bankrupt, and they're able to pay over time. That we can we can talk about that, right? Um, which which is not common, right? Generally, these these companies are not going in the process of going bankrupt. That's rare. I would say we see that once or twice a year, out of about four hundred fifty cases a year, realistically speaking, right? So, you, you know, all these conversations are things that can take place. And all of them skew the probabilities wildly, just completely. There's no ability to like count on what's gone before. Anyways, Truth Seeker, I hope this helps. If it does, like, subscribe, comment down below. Helps our channel to grow. Take care.